It's Monday on Your View. Welcome to the show. I am Morayo Afolabi Brown. As always, I have the ladies of Your View with me. Good morning, ladies. Excellent Good morning. morning. How are you? We have the whole crew here. How are you guys doing? So we're doing okay. How was your weekend, Obiajuli? Uh, my weekend was awesome. Um, nice hair. Thank you. <laughs> I hosted the Train Up a Child conference right. on Saturday. Um, my second compare work <laughs> where I had to stand all through doing the hosting, you know, navigating with the panelists, the speakers and all that. It was a wonderful um, conference and it was more about um, deliberate parenting. You, you need to, because times have changed. What's it happen? They pay me, they pay me, forget. <laughs> and then they do free job. <laughs> <laughs> Time has changed. So yes. we can't just leave our kids right. and just you know, swing along like yeah. it comes. That's we have good. to be deliberate well, about uh, it. Obiajulu wears many caps. You know, yeah. You book I'm reading, you know, acting. But when you said Obiajulu oh, wears many caps, I thought we were going to say blonde cap, <laughs> red cap. <laughs> <laughs> well, she, she does quite a bit. So yeah. it's good yeah. to know that. Um, that they, they, you're not just doing them in paper. You're actually, I'm actually yeah, working. Yeah. Which is great. And I have the capacity for you it. I have the capacity. That's fantastic. Well done. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Nima. Akasha uh, Nima is in, in the gratitude mood this morning. So all of you didn't know that. So, oh, yeah past week we've not had power mm -hmm. you know that i always stock up imagine my chicken just melting oh god my bush meat melting Jesus fish Nazareth. this croaker fish that you know how expensive Jesus. they call melting hey. so i went crazy i called a Cody school and amazing customer service for real amazing eco disco ekdc oh my god it's working progress they will tell you i will call you back they will call you back mm -hmm. they'll tell you madam come down we're working on it we'll give you a brief we're meeting we'll, uh, and i was sitting at home and i did not go and queue i don't carry placards and 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 <laughs> so the bad bag you like at the end of the day the, no our transformer is not good mm. so we're going to have to go and fix it and i was like so um because you know that's that might be a six months process right, right. and they said no no madam calm down we will put a replacement for you to use mm. while we're repairing that when we are done fixing, we done that. in, today they're bringing it. I, but the customer service, the conversation yeah, was just well, mind well, resting. So when you do yeah. well, we celebrate you. Yeah. So that's yeah. Eco Disco. Fantastic. You. But somebody told me that Eco well, Disco is not their made to in disco yeah. business, actually, because I've been under that disco. For, and the way I got my prepared meters is not the same because I'm trying to get from the other disco for my parents. And the quality of service, my parents' transformer has been bad since. You know what that disco does? They just come on Saturday, they'll take it two days on, two days off for the past 10 years. Mm -hmm. It's been like that. But this is a disco where we had those issues and they simply just bought a new transformer, cut wow. off a new community, Fantastic. and that transformer is bad now. But nice, nice. I'm it's happy. Different. That, because mm. whenever they do what well, we should actually we should, acknowledge should, and like, Disco. I've been hearing good things about Eco Disco. No. Mm. That's good. How are you doing, Mariam? I'm fine. Um, thankfully, today there was no traffic because, you know, I told you last week yeah. every day, so I don't know where they went because I didn't see any of those um, articulated vehicles as they call they them sleeping. on the road, so maybe they're <laughs> off in the north. <laughs> and something interesting is happening in my house. My husband has um, registered to run in the marathon. <gasps> Really? Ah, yes. So there's practice going on. Yes, and we cannot rest. Where's my <laughs> skipping rope? Where's my? He does not help us with anything in the morning. He will wake ah. up first thing and go and do his jogging. Ah. And every time, so I'm proud of him. Oh. You know, my husband is of uh, is a man of a certain age. Yes. And I'm always motivated by how he pushes himself. Yeah. Age mm. is nothing but a number for him. That's you know, awesome. and it because we also have he has like really young children. It's right. good for them to see their father push oh, even at this. Yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll be skipping when I get to your house. We'll be rooting for him. Strong. We'll be oh, it, my sister. <laughs> we'll be rooting for him. Oh, Fantastic. please. Yeah. So over the weekend, my, my son was one. Yes. We, did, we didn't do any party. We just Cute we video. Actually, Come. My, my, my daughter's, my kid's um, after school teacher got him a small cake. And to Martha, thank you very much. She got oh. a small cake. And it was that cake, which I didn't bother buying that cake. Mm. Now I can just buy one year old. I said, I don't need to. There's a small cake in the house. <laughs> no, but the little guy enjoyed it. I like but the dance. He was dancing. Yeah. 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 <laughs> he was really adorable. It was fun. Mm. And also over the weekend, I was featured in Guardian yes. newspaper. Yes. yes. Amazing. I, the Guardian woman, I mean, it's something that I was really happy and proud of. Um, yeah. and, 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 I, and I thank God for it. It was something that... Um, I didn't plan for it, as I said, but it just happened. Did you say I... it properly? How I, the how Guardian I... Woman. Yes. She was featured in the Guardian newspaper yes. as the Guardian Woman. Yes. So, you know, Morel would like to just breeze no, over no, it. No, you know, no, it's, no, it's, no, it's, no. It's, it's good to see that you're being recognized. Mm -hmm. and, I mean, it's many people already celebrate and recognize you, but sometimes it's good to see when mainstream also yeah. do that. So and you are very deserving of it. It's also good to be humble. No. Okay, I wanted the producers to actually show the picture, but unfortunately, they didn't get that brief. It's all good. Let's go on a break. When we come back, we'll go through the front pages of the news people stay with us we'll be right back mm -hmm. 
We're going to start with the nation. So Southwest governors won't back down on Amotekun. Mm. Two feared dead in Lagos pipeline fire. Varsity workers plan strike over wage. Oh, we are Julia, this yes, is your wage so matter. I'm following up. 50 directors moved in massive shakeup, FIRS. Wow. Food items, tuitions, others exempted from VAT. Protests in Imo, Abia, others over Ihe Dioha. Supporters hold vigil in Sokoto, Bauchi, and Kano, and Bwari Ulubado Mourn Are. Okay, let's start with the wage, since you're interested yes, in that. Yes, I'm soon. interested because they are my people. We People need to get paid for what the work they do. You know, you pay people their wages. So the university workers are upset, saying that they haven't received the new minimum wage already. And, um, you know, the deadline was given for all of them to start paying some of the states that have concluded their consequential adjustments negotiation, which is 31st of December. Yeah. But they are saying that um, they have not received any of the payments. So they are having meetings to discuss what's actually going on. Some are saying that it could be because uh, some of them have not registered with the IPPIS, but um, it's basically those ones who have even registered have not been paid the new national minimum wage. So okay, let's, let's talk about the fire incident in Lagos State. Who has that story? So in Abu Lekba, Okodo yesterday, pipeline um, fire happened and this just continued to spread. It started from a particular area and spread to Abuli Egba, Fagba. All those areas were burning at the same time. According to the representative of the Lagos State, uh, about three stations, the one in Alausa, the one in uh, Magigi, were all responding to the fire at the same time and they couldn't. So the NMPC had to shut down what, uh, the pipeline supply from somewhere in Ogun State to, you know, to curtail a uh, flow of petrol inflammables to that point. My f one, number one worry is that if we have petrol depots in Satellite Town bringing in and in Kirikiri bringing in petrol products to this country, are we still refining products in this country mm. to the extent that we're passing products mm. through pipeline for people to even vandalize, vandalize in the first place? Then number two, how do residents sleep knowing that this kind of activities that could kill, could, you know, yeah, go people area. to this extent happens around them? Mm -hmm. See, no matter how people try to shut down the truth, I think it would be nice for one person to make the headlines. I've been confronted these activities in that area. This is like the third or fourth time is making the papers that pipeline fires started in that area. And I don't understand why we just keep being reactive. The government understands that these pipelines are laid within mm -hmm. residential areas. And it's like nobody's really taking action concerning no, Nigerians this Nigerians are our own enemies. No, no, Somebody comes into my area and is vandalizing pipeline. Yes. I know this might... Well, I wait until there's a fire before yeah, government comes. The, the, the report said that most of them are afraid because by the time they report them, they always come back for a reprisal attack on them. We don't even want pipelines in residential areas in the first place. Yeah. How well, do we do the that? The truth now? is, the truth is, nobody grants approval to build on those areas. But Nigerians always build, despite usual warning, despite okay. the problems they face. Let's move on to the punch. Um, uh, Operation Amotekun, we are not targeting any ethnic group. Southwest Governor's Ali fares. Leah is around Lake Chad, says release play to aid worker. Mm. Emo, PDP protest alleges Supreme Court's manipulation, demands CGN sacking. Mm. My re-election is certain, declares Obaseki. Leki Koyi bridge full, cashless toll begins today. Um, what, 17 soldiers killed, scores abducted in fresh Boko Haram attack, and APC PDP goes spiritual as Supreme Court decides Sokoto yeah. Benue Bukano Bauchi polls today. Okay, let's start very quickly with Leah Sharibu. Okay, so um, an aid worker, Jennifer Samuel, has been released. She used to work with UNICEF. <coughs> she was abducted two years ago. And um, when talking with reporters in just, she was saying that she met with Leah Sharibu as well as another aid worker, Grace Taco. So they're still alive. She said, she just also gave her story of how they were abducted and kept in the bushes. But they were sort of treated well. She <coughs> said at first they were under lock and key, but after a while they were allowed to move around in like a gated um, area. And that um, they were very insistent on their religion, making them do what they're doing was their religion that allowed that, that God told them that they didn't need to be that they would be released, so they were released, you know. Yeah. But it's good to know that Leah Shari is still alive. They even say that she's even fatter than she was when she, when she was abducted, that she's actually, she's living well, but yes, she, she has left everything to the hands of God, mm. but she's actually But well, they are well. constantly threatened to be married off yeah. as yeah. slaves. So that so they can have, yes. Yeah. Okay, let's pick another story. Uh, Imo, well, the protests? Or yeah. do we do the PDP so, um, take going spiritual? Which one are we taking? It's the same, it's the same, same story. Yes, go ahead. So, so protests have uh, started in, in most states by PDP uh, followers protesting the Supreme Court judgment, saying and, and giving the Supreme Court uh, judges a two week or two weeks ultimatum to reverse their judgment. I don't know if it works like that, mm -hmm. but they are protesting. With the spiritual okay. angle. <laughs> uh, yes, and, and based on that, you know, the, the Supreme Court is deciding today on Sokoto 
uh, Bauchi and Kano, I think, mm. today. So, of course, the PDP has gone spiritual, praying that they, were they, black. Don't, they don't suffer what they assume mm. that they suffered. In, in they and black. for those of you living in Ikoi, like he, they're saying that today starts the full implementation of the cashless uh, toll. So that the means you can only go the through Ikoi. the VI the, uh -huh. um, access. You cannot go through the Ikoi Leki um, toll without, without the, the um, cashless token. or the, what, what's it called? Yes, the, the, the e cards, the, e the tokens, the e vouchers. Yes. Yeah. Okay, moving on very quickly to the Nigerian Tribune. Now, Motekun has its roots in 1999. Constitution Affair <coughs> replies Malami. Corrupt dealers ruined our Yuletide with stone filled rice. Hmm. More questions as protesters rock Imo Anambra. Many houses, vehicles burnt as pipeline explosion rocks Abuli Agba in Lagos State. Peace Corps Agabi petitions AGF over police disobedience to court order. Discos Jenko's trade blame and electricity supply worsens. And Ibadan chieftaincy crisis over, says Olubadan. That's fantastic. So this, um, one more story. When yeah, I was 16, yeah. I was sold as slave to Mali for 350,000 naira by my boyfriend, says victim. Okay, let's talk about the Yuletide rice for a second, because I know that lots of people so, uh, were victims to this. Yes. According to the article, um, <coughs> residents in Abuja are complaining about how their rice was compromised by Nigerian farmers during that Russian season period. and and how every spoon of rice or every other spoon of rice was stone filled and how low quality of rice was milled during that mm. period. This is something I can attest to being a rice distributor myself. Mm. So I got about, I ordered for 50 bags and that's why most of you that are ordering your rice didn't get it. Mm. I opened the first bag, it was stone filled. One bag out of every other, out of every three was the only free. So mm. after, no, out of every four, you get a good bag. So it, that was difficult for me to supply. I was receiving the supplied bags back because for every complaint I took it back. So in other so words, you asked us to support to patronize Nigerian rice. Mm -hmm. But the dealers are compromising this effort because you're you're you are selling out stone filled rice. So which is it? Should we go back and go and buy our foreign no, rice that we know that doesn't have a stone? Academic to call them out society. like yes. you're doing. I think yes. you have to return some of no, the bags. I'm, I'm not just calling out. Yes, I'm insisting on what I have paid for. Paid I paid for, for yeah. quality. Yes. I you looked at quality. and you know I I didn't so they are our own enemies. Yes, reduce the price. Let's let's take one more story. The victim Yeah so a late an 18-year-old girl, Victoria, um, recently was um, rescued by um, <coughs> security personnel. She had been sold to, um, trafficked hmm. to Mali for 350,000 naira. And she said it was her boyfriend that did that. Hmm. And in this particular case, she was, meant, she was about to be sold to another African country when she and another victim of trafficking got in a fight. And that brought the attention of security personnel and found out that they were being trafficked. They said, Madame, who is a 30-year-old that takes them from one person to the other. And for okay. each person that she traffics, she gets mm. 18,500. So wow. that was how they were able to get back to her. Wow. So it's a whole syndicate of trafficking Crazy. and... Okay, moving on to the garden very quickly. Confusion as submarine cable cuts mm. slows internet. Diseases may soon become untreatable due to lack of new antibiotics. That's a very interesting, interesting mm. article. Um, who has a major headline? Okay, so this sub submarine cable system is on the ICs in Europe and it covers our own West African cable system um, totally. It supplies countries like Nigeria and South Africa as well. It connects about 14 countries. This cable underwater in the, in the ICs went bad yesterday. And most of us doing internet banking and all that would have suffered a loss from it. The MTN network is supposed to be covered by this cable. They've already apologized on their Twitter page mm. to their uh, subscribers for bad network on their internet as well. And it affected 14 countries in, in West mm -hmm. Africa. Yeah, so, including us. <coughs> so the antibiotics, mm -hmm. WHO is warning very that the decline in uh, lack of investment in the sector and uh, lack of development in the new antibiotics We'll, sit, we'll have a situation where many of these diseases like HIV, diabetes, will not be, will not be able to be cured anymore because of lack of antibiotics. You know, antibiotics are in different levels. Mm. So the more, the, the higher the disease or it is, the, the, the certain type of antibiotics are, are recommended. But right now, we're not even having more. So it's like, they become, the, many diseases become um, antibiotic mm. resistant, such yes, that, yes. that those antibiotics cannot work anymore for those diseases. And Any that can be to what we can something do? Where, sorry, you can start to look at what the organization investment okay, in, in developing we more look antibiotics. For alternative medicine. I don't know how, but and you know, our father, our grandparents survived. Yeah, you don't no, know the the no, the quality of alternative medicine out there is not regulated, so it's poor. If we are just, you know, continue to study that, okay, it's well, not giving us a bit Chinese that's all we, can take. we have to run up because we have quite a few things to cover today. That's when we come back. 
the hottest news in the town right now is the issue of Amoteku mm -hmm. and the recent um, Imo State um, court judgment. So we're going to bring in um, our, uh, an SAN, a lawyer, Mr. Femi Falano, who's going to be joining us to help us understand exactly what these things mean. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. So last week, we discussed the trending Amotekun story. Mm -hmm. On the show today, <clears throat> our guest will be giving us an update on the federal government recently announced, <clears throat> excuse me, that, his move, that this move was illegal. Um, joining us is a human rights lawyer and activist, Mr. Femi Falano, SAN. Welcome to the show, sir. Good morning. You can call us on 070-8066-8014. You can also tweet to us at TVC. Can I please hashtag your VTVC so we can read your tweet. Let's start with this Amotekun, because there's, there's a, almost like a disconnect between what the Southwest governors are saying and what the federal government is understanding or interpreting. Southwest governors have told us over the time that it's an intelligence gathering unit to support. But we're hearing where the AGF is saying that no, it's, anti it's, it's, um, it's, it's, it's not constitutional, it's wrong. Others are saying it's some way to get that regional policing that is illegal. In your own view, was, is Amotekun, was it properly thought through? And, um, and is, it, is, is, it, is it unconstitutional? Well, uh, frankly <coughs> speaking, I, I think the controversy is totally unnecessary, totally uncalled for. Mm -hmm. <coughs> if the federal government and the state's government in the country are interested in protecting the lives, citizens. The lives and property mm -hmm. of our people, there shouldn't be any controversy with respect to the agencies or mechanisms put in place. Mm. But you know, in our country, everything is politicized. And that is what has happened. I mean, apart from the government of your state, the entire region, the entire Southwest, is APC controlled. So what you will have expected, even if the federal government has some reservations, what should have been done was for the Attorney General of the federal government, Mr. Boba Kamalami, mm -hmm. and his mm -hmm. colleagues in the Mr. state mm -hmm. to meet and iron out <coughs> the differences, if there, if there should be. At the same time, it has to be realized that even up to now, Amotekun is at the stage of gestation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Apart from the launching ceremony that took place in Ibadan, there's no legal framework yet. Uh -huh. And that is why I have advised the Southwest governors to rush back to the drawing room and send bills. The governors will have to send bills to the Houses of Assembly, mm -hmm. so that we have a legal framework okay. that will stipulate the structure, the establishment, the funding and operations. Shouldn't that be the oh. first thing mm -hmm. exactly. they would have done? Frankly speaking, I thought that should have been the first, but if even before the law. But sir, yeah. if we're comparing it to a JTF, they didn't need to go through that process to put a JTF mm -hmm. no, or in no, the north. No. Okay. Again, you have to appreciate the circumstances warranting the establishment of JTF, ISBA, and the rest of them. Mm -hmm. In the case of civilian JTF in Borno and Yobe states, it wasn't the government or the military that set up the body. Okay. It was a body set up by young people who were volunteers okay. who felt <coughs> we're not going to allow Mm. our Coming. territory to be overrun by terrorists. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so it was set up. A colleague of mine, a lawyer in Bono State, assisted to register the body under Part C of the Companies and Allied, right. Allied Matters okay. Act. Of course, as usual, the armed forces were vehemently opposed to the involvement of civilians the in the prosecution of, uh, you know, uh, the war against 
down. <coughs> but over the time, it became increasingly clear that these guys know the terrorists more than our Abi? troops. Yes. And they were given correct information, mm. reliable information. They were the people gathering intelligence for the armed forces. So it took time before the military embraced the civilian JTF. Right. Even mm. after mm. that, the state government, the Bono state government, under uh, uh, Governor Shetima, and I think that policy still continues now, under the current administration, decided, the government decided, not to allow the young people to operate on their own. It was at that stage, the, the state government decided that we're not going to allow these young people to confront well-armed terrorists mm. with their hands. Right. The issue of arming them yes. then became necessary. Okay. And, so, and so, the police, the Nigerian police force, mm. is therefore allowed to investigate mm. these young people. Right. And if convinced that they are responsible, Allow it they are to given speak. arms. Okay, so this me... morning, um, Chief Affair Babalola, the, the SAN, was also advising the governors in the southwest to go on with their Moteco plan and uh, insisting that it's the federal government who has to go to court to contest whether it's legal or not. Considering that this is still under the exclusive list for the federal government under the constitution, how do you, would you advise, would you advise is the same way he's advised or differently? Now what is in the exclusive? Police. The security. No, police and security matters are within the exclusive legislative list. Yes. Mm. But policing in Nigeria is not the exclusive responsibility of the federal no, government. Policing. Uh, policing. You, know, you know, when you are talking of security of Nigeria, I have repeatedly blamed the state governors okay. for abdicating policing in Nigeria. To the federal. To the federal government. Mm. By virtue of section 153 of the constitution, there shall be the Nigerian Police Council. Under section 216 of the constitution, an inspector general of police cannot be appointed or removed by the president without consulting the Nigerian Police, police Council. Council. Who are members of the Nigerian Police Council? The president is only the chairman. Okay. It's a 39-member body. You have the 36 state governors, wow. okay. the president as chair, the inspector general of police, and the chairman, police service commission. So that body has 36 governors. Mm. <laughs> we are not aware of this body. Short. That body is required by the constitution. <laughs> not put in the constitution. Mm. The seven schedule. Mm. That body, paragraph L, that body is empowered to administer to organize and supervise the Nigerian police force. So we do not have the Niger federal government police force. We have the Nigerian police force. Oh, gotcha. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh. Which shall be managed by the Nigerian police camp. But since 1999, the president has been allowed single-handedly to admit, yeah. do with everybody's work. To admit exercise the powers yes. of that body. Okay. And that is why we're in a mess. Yes. All right, let me jump in here. Okay. So from the way you've ex explained it, it just seems to me that um, the way um, projects like this have been created in the north, it seems like they did it from within ground the up. people, yes, mm -hmm. from the ground up. Should that no, be the way? No, I've only spoken about um, Bono and Yobe State. Okay, Bono With Ayobe. respect to Isba uh -huh. and vigilante groups in Everywhere 20 else. states in the country, 20 states. It was the initiative of the state government. Uh -huh. okay. In Lagos State, we have the neighborhood watch. Yeah. Yes. Again, it was the initiative of the Lagos State government. Yeah. Okay. I remember I, I, I was <coughs> invited <coughs> by the uh, uh, speaker, Honorable Obasa, to participate in the public hearing yeah. when the bill, the neighborhood watch bill was being discussed. That's, that's what has happened all over the country. So my question now is, are people, is this um, 
um, what would you say, federal government insisting on on shutting it down? Could it just be that you know a lot of people are saying that uh, it's ethnic in nature? No, I don't some, think yeah, some people are. Uh, what do you call them? The Fulani headsmen no, I don't have agree. come out to say, you know, but they felt no. a bit threatened. No, Could I that be the reason why they would like for it to maybe have like a conference or something? We sit no, down I, and talk I, about I, it before. I would rather suggest that you should ask them. I deal with the fast on ground as a mm. lawyer. I deal with them. Yeah. Yeah. But frankly speaking, right. if there is <clears throat> any government in Nigeria that should be accused of violating the constitution, mm. it is the federal government. Mm. Because section 214 stipulates of the constitution stipulate that there shall be only one police force which shall be called the Nigerian police force. And no other force, no other police force shall be allowed in the country. Mm. But in spite of the provision of that, of the constitution, okay, the federal government has set up the state security service whose operatives bear arms, they even mask themselves. Mm. The federal government set up in 2003 the Nigerian Security no, CDC. and Civil Defense Corps, oh. which is not answerable to the Inspector General of Police. Mm -hmm. It does the work of the police. Apart from these two institutions, you also have the Nigerian Correctional Service, mm -hmm. former uh, prison mm -hmm. service. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You have the Nigerian Customs Service and others that are allowed to bear arms, arms. in the country. We have to, I, I, I want us to, because we have to wrap up with some more tech I'd like you to just give us in a nutshell. So, um, Malami has said, has said that it's illegal. Others are saying, mm. go to court. With profound respect, Mr. Abubakar Malami, yes. or the president of the country, President Muhammadu Buhari, cannot, okay. cannot, Declare. declare any organization illegal <coughs> without approaching the court. Fantastic. And that was the point made abundantly clear by the Supreme Court in the case of Attorney General of Lagos <coughs> and Attorney General of the Federation. When the former president, Chief Olusha mm. mm. by executive fear, decided to stop the payment of local government funds in Lagos. Lagos the yeah. Supreme Court pointed out mm that under a government that operates, a government that operates under the rule of law cannot resort to totalitarian tactics. That if the federal government felt dissatisfied by the creation of local governments in Lagos mm -hmm. State and is convinced that it was an illegal exercise, yeah. the federal government will have to approach I need to move on to the other topic, because we'll go quickly, ahead very yes, quickly. So you, I know you have, um, you, you have given your advice that the lawmakers of the different states should go back to the Trumbo. Houses of Assemblies to pass of the bill. Of course. Now, you know that takes a process. What if, at the end of the day, it doesn't become law? What happens to our motive? No, it's, it's likely to be passed into law. Yes. The mm. other area which is being argued is, oh, the Southwest cannot have a regional yeah. security. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you, yeah, I'm yeah, sure you have heard that. Yes. Yes, Again, yes. You have the Federal Character Commission Act, which is an extant law that has grouped the six states in the Southwest as a geopolitical zone, so, a political zone. Okay. Uh -huh. So if the West, if the Southwest states mm. can have or do our investment limited in the area of the economy, why can it not have collaboration in the area of security? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. These arguments are totally unnecessary. So there's a question. Again, as I said, once the law is clear, yeah. I, I think the controversy okay. is One question from Twitter. Uh, Islam Zino says, my concern isn't about the government's approval, but about mismanagement and abuse of power. I just hope this Amoteko wouldn't be another version of police. So he's talking about the excesses of the police and those areas of abuses. How are going to be armed. I don't know why people keep saying that. This Hold is on. intelligence Let's gathering. Start. Let's get his response. <coughs> I mean, you have the neighborhood watch in Lagos State. Mm -hmm. Nobody has ever alleged mm -hmm. yeah. that the government of Lagos State or the governor of Lagos State has, is using the neighborhood watch uh, wow. members to harass people. anybody. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Again, vigilance is important on the part of our people. Yes. But I think part of the fear if you must be honest. So election for With respect to Amacheku, was the way the campaign has been conducted. Okay. In the case of Lagos, you have the neighborhood watch 
headed by a retired DIG, Mr. Adio. So the confidence is already mm. there. I'm also aware that Ekiti has a, a, a security outfit, which is headed by a retired general. These are all means to ensure there is confidence, mm. you know, in such outfits. <clears throat> so I do not expect that I'm a techno in any of the states mm. will be converted to a political tool to harass anybody. All right, I have to go on a break, unfortunately. Let's go. When you come back, there are other major topics I'd like you to touch on, especially the verdict we got from Imo State. Stay with us, we'll be right back. Welcome back to Your View. Thanks for staying with us. So last week we got the groundbreaking judgment from Imo State, from the Supreme Court judgment actually. And um, they struck out, uh, I think it was a um, new governor now, Ihe Dioha is now the governor. No, and no, the argument no. was... Ihe Dioha was... Ihe was struck out, sorry. Yeah. And Izuzo oh, Dima yeah. is now the new governor. And um, the, 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 the issue was that 388 polling units were not included in the original counting. To the layman out there, they're thinking, how is that possible? Because what, what we thought happened was that the reason why INEC had canceled those polling units was because they were um, illegally counted or they were, they were actually, the, in fact, in some cases we heard that they actually wrote down the results. Mm -hmm. The elections didn't really take place in those polling units. So suddenly now, the Supreme Court is not reading or accepting the results from those polling units. So there's a lot of different arguments out there. Could you tell us, explain to our viewers, what the Supreme Court considered in overturning this judgment? Mariah, well, frankly speaking, it is difficult to subject the judgment to any critical analysis for now. Okay. Because what the court did say, yes, this is our finding. We shall give our reasons later, mm. which is not unusual. It's a common practice by the Supreme Court. And it's only the Supreme Court that is empowered to deliver a judgment and give its reasons later. But having said that, we must put sentiments aside and address the problem. And what is the problem? There is an increasing tendency to turn the courts into the electorate. We no longer believe in the electorate. It is, it is the courts now that determine who win elections in Nigeria. Mm. It's a very dangerous phenomenon. To even to agree to know the candidates that will contest election, we rush to court. Because godfathers, political godfathers, impose candidates mm. contrary to the provisions of the Electoral Act. So you then have to end up in court. After the election has been conducted, again, you have to get it seen the result of the election. You turn to the tribunal or the court to determine who has won an election. It doesn't happen anywhere in the world. Mm. Nigeria has the highest rate, highest number of election disputes all over the world. No trust. And there is no way the courts can satisfy everybody because judges are not trained. They are not suited to determine the winners of elections. Oh, oh. They, they simply base the their judgment the on the evidence adduced before them. Before them. Yes. In this particular instance, our courts have failed that once an election is concluded, the INEC has no power to cancel the results. It's a different matter. If you are saying when the election was going on, there was violence, cancel the area. and therefore we cancel the whole thing, the election is postponed. But once the election is concluded, the courts have said that if you want to cancel the results, you have to go to the tribunal. Hmm. This was what happened in this case. And if you are talking about democracy, can you genuinely annul 
the votes of three the people the, in the 388 units. <clears throat> now, if you then look at this case, of course, the tribunal said, he had the aura won the election. Yeah. Maker. He had the aura. The Court of Appeal, by majority decision, said yes. But there was a minority judgment. One of the judges wrote a 62-page judgment, which awarded victory to oh. Hope Unzodima. Oh. Hmm. When this matter got to the Supreme Court, the court had the two judgments. Mm. The Supreme Court now decided to embrace the, the minority judgment, the yeah. dissenting judgment, again, which is not unusual. But why? We have to address this problem once and for all. Is that, I mean, for the first time now, people are going to the street to demonstrate against the ruling of the Supreme Court. Mm. We are entering into a very dangerous yeah. situation. What's the way out, sir? So, the way that out. Our electoral act was inside. Okay, mm -hmm. before the way out. This, if you recall, the Agor Bush election dispute in the United States of America in 2000. Everybody in the world knew that Agor oh. was the winner of the election. Mm -hmm. But the Supreme Court of America said no. It was a 5-4 split decision of the court. One of the judges, Justice Bruder, who gave, who led the minority, I mean the dissenting, who wrote a very powerful dissenting opinion, said, we may, Americans, we may never know the actual winner of this election, but the loser is well known, <laughs> and the loser is the judiciary. Mm. And what did Agor do? Agor, as a matured politician, in a serious liberal bourgeois, I mean, system, said, in the interest of democracy in America, in the interest of the unity of our people, I concede victory. Mm -hmm. Mm. And in this case, the same Supreme Court, very recently, said the APC had no candidates in River State. So mm -hmm. it was a PDP affair. Yeah. Justice was done. Mm -hmm. In San Farah State, because of internal wrangling among the APC members, yes. all those who had won the election were kicked out of office. And the Supreme Court said the PDP that was in the minority in that election yeah. won. won the election. So the governor, the legislators at the state and federal level mm. were declared the winners of the Again, That's justice was all. done. Mm. So, so what I'm there for say, the way out, both the PDP and the APC are to blame for the crisis we're in. Mm. Mm. Because between 2207 and now, we have had three electoral reform panels, two by the PDP, one by the APC. All their recommendations for genuine, transparent, and credible elections have been thrown to the dustbin. So unless we go back to those recommendations, mm. we're not going to get it right. And one of them is... Okay. One of them is to appoint the chairman or the chair of the electoral body and the members. It shall be by advertisement. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And the NGC, the National Judicial Council, mm -hmm. will sit to look at the CV of the mm. candidates, mm. and then recommend to the president who to appoint. Okay. There shall be an electoral offenses tribunal to try 
All those who manipulate elections. Mm. But we don't have yes, okay. so All those who have, have elections to run are never sanctioned in Nigeria. Mm. Yeah, so, so these are the problems. Yeah. Yes, let me, let me let protesters see. are now demanding for a revisit of the judgment. Is that possible? No, no, no. And the way it is, again, the, uh, uh, again, we must not allow politicians to confuse Nigeria. Oh, okay. mm -hmm. If you are convinced that the Supreme Court is wrong in its decision, yes. you will wait, you have to wait for the reasons for the judgment. Okay. If you believe that those judgments did not take cognizance of certain laws okay. or fact, you can then go back to that court and ask for a review. Okay. But it's never done on the street. Okay, gotcha. Oh, because because we always used to right. hear that so once you get oh, yes. to the Supreme so, Court, that's the last resort. So once, so, so, yeah, the, so, yeah, the yeah. Supreme Court has, but they've not brought out their own judgment yet. Yeah. Of course. So once the judgments come out. No, and you read they, it and you are convinced certain yeah. laws were not taken into cognizance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. for so that's what of we should course. wait for. All right, that's unfortunately, the that's all we can take. I really wanted to throw in a few other questions, but we can't. We have to round up. But thank you very much for always coming to enlighten us on these areas, these great areas. We'll be bringing you back because mm. this is Nigeria. <laughs> the issues never end. See the look. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> at least now we know what to do. We don't break protest. now. When we come back, we want to give you a gift. Thank you very much for coming. You know, we, we, you've been coming, but we don't give anything. So I'd ask for one of our supporters to us be giving all our guests a nice Your View mug. So you remember us whenever you're yeah, taking coffee tea. or tea. <laughs> Thank you nice very much. From your for the first time. <laughs> <laughs> That's all we can take. When we come back, another hot, hot trending topic, the finance bill. What does it mean for you and I? Stay with us. We'll be right back. Thank you. Welcome back to Your View. Thanks for staying with us. So re uh, recently, President Mohamed Buhari signed the Nigerian Tax and Fiscal Amendment Bill 2019, otherwise known as the Finance Bill, into law. The new law contains over 90 changes to different tax laws. Um, joining us to discuss the new act is Mr. Ulushola Oluoyeye, a financial expert. Welcome to the show, sir. Good morning. You can call us on 070. 8066-8014. You can also tweet us at TV so Connect. Please hashtag your view TV so we can read your tweets. Lots of people have attempted to break this down so that the layman can understand what it means to their individual businesses. But like us to start with the VAT part of it. Um, this is about um, local items, certain personal effects would not be taxed. Um, my worry was that I mean it was, it was encouraging, but my worry was that if I go to the supermarket and buy a few things. The point is, how do I know which one is taxable and which one is not taxable? So to the layman, they were not clear. We say from 5% to 7.5%, how do I know which one is going to be taxed in my groceries? Okay, thank you very much. Mm. Uh, the introduction of the bill, first I need to mention very quickly, uh, is a good direction for uh, Nigeria okay. as an economy. Uh, it's also in line with global best practice. Okay. And um, when I come down directly to your question, uh, where you talked about how will a common man on the street be able to have a few of this change. Uh, the list has been expanded. This is not the first time that we have exemption on VAT. Mm -hmm. But now the list has been expanded to now include basic food items, uh, such as cereal, um, sanitary ah. parts. Uh, That's locally produced, locally locally produced ones. Cereal. This is also uh, to reduce importation as mm. much as possible mm -hmm. and encourage local production. Uh, majorly food items like rice and you know basic foods that you know Nigerian consume. So for for example, sorry to cut you off. If I if I buy a foreign pack of cereal and maybe local milk and local bread and all that, and I get to the grocery to the to the till and I want to pay. So would they not only tax the foreign cereal, or is it? I mean, or is it taxed already in the in the, in the cost? I, I need to be sure. The way the way is, the way taxed. the whole system is designed is such that those items that are exempted, you know, will already be on the system. So you will not be taxed for those basic food items. Oh. Whereas those ones you yeah, that are foreign already will be taxed. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. So um, the um, finance bill provides that. Um, companies that are just starting their business will apply for the tax filing at the commencement of the business. Yes. You know, before they give like a six months uh, grace period so that at least a business can settle okay. before you start paying your VAT. So what's the implication for new businesses right now? Now, uh, the commencement rule, uh, basically one of the things this <coughs> finance bill has come to be able to address is to give you a bit more of room up to 12 months now. Okay. 
Okay. As against what it used to be before. And beyond that, uh, the threshold that has now been set also give opportunity uh, such that organizations that generate revenue below 25 million yeah. will have no company income tax. And if you look at most Nigerian companies, uh, they fall within uh, what we call the micro, small, medium enterprises. Okay. And therefore, uh, this bill is going to assist quite a lot of companies that are just coming in who will not get into threshold of 2,500 million or 100 million and above to have that, you know, form of holiday for a while that they will not be subject to what any form of tax. Thank you, sir. So on um, this morning, I was discussing with my husband and I wondered how this is going to solve our revenue problem. One of the issues that Nigeria has is that we're borrowing so much. And we know the financial minister said we don't have a borrowing problem, we have a revenue generation problem. And hence, I think that's why the bill was passed. How, what are the potentials in this bill now that you know that would, how does it contribute to increasing our revenue generation? Okay, now there are five major aspects of this bill that we need to take cognizance of. First is promoting SMEs, just like I've mentioned. So uh, two uh, is that uh, there's a bit of physical uh, equity whereby it's more a, of progressive tax system now as against being regressive, uh, where uh, low-income earners pay almost as the same as high-income earners. But with what we have now, there's a bit of balance. Uh, the, the companies that hence more revenue have to pay more. Okay. okay? And the companies that are earning less revenue will not pay okay. at all. But companies that earn between 25 million to 100 million uh, the tax rate generally for everybody used to be 30% company income tax. But now that has been what? Reduced for organizations that generate revenue between 25 million to 100 million okay. to 20%. So that in, in a way is going to relieve some certain companies. That's now, relieving the companies. How now, does it to, for to revenue generation now, there's more people coming into the tax net with this finance bill. Okay. Uh, there is a provision for something called significant economic presence. That's right. If you look at what is going on now uh, with digital economy, uh, quite a lot of foreign organizations are coming into the Nigerian space uh, to sell their platforms for money transfers, for agency banking, for this. Now, this new tax law would define what is significant, significant economic presence. And with your significant economic presence, it means that you will have to pay some tax. Some of those foreign companies will have to pay tax in Nigeria. Mm. Okay. Yeah, so, so not like they will just come and use their platform mm -hmm. here. Their company is registered abroad. Mm -hmm. And then all yeah. the revenue Go incomes there. goes there. That but was now, yeah, that's actually my question. Because also there was a time where a lot of people thought it meant that if you're doing an online business, as a Nigerian, you have an online business, but you do not have a physical place, does this also affect you? Um, currently now, once you do online business mm. and you are registered in Nigeria, yes. then you have an obligation to, you know, your tax, to pay, the tax. To pay your tax in okay. Nigeria. So, okay. yeah. sorry, um, we have this, which confused me a bit, this excess dividend, uh, excess dividend tax. Okay. What exactly does that mean? Does that mean money will be sent, given back to us? <laughs> you know, what does it mean? Okay, before now, uh, in the tax law, you know, there are quite a lot of leakages, and it also goes back to the question you asked earlier, uh, whereby uh, is there possibility of, you know, uh, increasing revenue through this medium. Uh, in the provision of our tax law before, once you declare a loss in a year, you will not be subject to tax. tax. Okay. However, if you happen to declare dividend, meaning that shareholders mm -hmm. are to take something yeah. back, 30% mm -hmm. will be subject to tax. See, that's my worry. Wow. That, that, that right there is my issue because this is Nigeria. This thing can be falsified. Even, even they are abroad. You see companies <laughs> evading tax. You know, so where if you're already saying that a huge market, the SMEs, the young people who are growing, are exempted for now because many of them have businesses below 25 million. You've already taken a huge bracket out of the possibility of generating revenue. Now, you're not looking for that medium scale and above. These guys have enough well to do to evade tax or to even falsify their documents. Mm -hmm. How would you actually mean they may know they made profits? How do we monitor? Because 
it's, it's, it's difficult to ensure that we get the revenue. We are just like to echo what Sinema said, our debt profile is, is huge. And if the government really wants to get more money back, you would think that they would look into the low, the lower mediums. Because the guy, I, mean, I, I appreciate they're not they're exempting them, but you yeah. think that huge market, you're losing quite a bit of money from that from that bracket. Thank, thank you very much. Uh, you need to recognize that one of the major focus of this new government is ease of doing business. Right. We need to bring as many people into, uh, you know, into that bracket of, uh, you know, being involved in creating transactions, trade going on. Now. You, you, you mentioned something about uh, making sure that um, everybody, you know, is involved and revenue is being what? Generated. Now, uh, I wanted to, uh, you know, I would like to mention something about this new tax law again, the, the finance bill. It has modernized tax a bit more. Now that we now have means for electronic, uh, we can use electronic mail okay. to be able to file mm -hmm. tax now. Uh, beyond that, the use of opening accounts now will now be in the use of TIN. TIN has to be provided before you can open a bank account, right. be it personal or company. Or even but for personal. There's better yeah. regulation now. So now you're going to bring quite a lot of people into the net. So those, you know, fears you used to have uh, to say that, oh, a lot of people are avoiding or running away from being able to, uh, you know, to evade tax, that is going to reduce Let, let me add to that. Come to you, Gaju. Sorry. The, in the papers a few weeks ago, I saw somebody was making, I don't know if it's calculated, but somebody made a statement that the kind of tax, the possibility, the, 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 there's about 30 billion money daily revenue. of revenue that these guys are making daily or kind of right, that's nationwide. Yeah. Mm. Now, if we have mechanisms of taxing them properly, where they know that they're paying levies, not yeah. the ones that, that the area boys are demanding from them. Mm -hmm. No, proper ways of getting levies, that's revenue. Yeah. So these are small businesses. This is a young man trying to start his own Okada business. Obviously, he's below 25, billion, 25 million a year. So when we can't tax him. But are we not losing money now, from that, from uh, you that know, area? Just like I mentioned, uh, this finance bill has tried to address about seven areas of taxes in Nigeria. Uh, be it value-added tax, personal income tax, company income tax. Now, we are going to be bringing in quite a lot of people that are not captured before within the tax system, you know. And that's where an Okada man, like you mentioned, for example, <coughs> have to open a bank account. Mm. His transactions, they are going to stop even him operating an existing account after some time if he fails to provide it in. Mm. And all this money will have to go through the banking system. So it gives us more visibility and it allows us to be able to what, to tax more properly. And that's why I don't just view it from VAT alone, don't view it alone from company no, income tax, company. but personal income tax yes. is there's going to be a huge right. amount of income. Let me take this call from Shomolu. Good morning. Sorry for keeping you. Hello, are you there? Yeah, I'm yeah. here. Thanks for calling. Go ahead, please. All right, my name is Precious. Um, Hi, Precious. I'm normal, I'm an electrician. Electrician, okay. I'm a local electrician. <laughs> Shomolu, I don't have a company, but I'm planning on one. We can't hear you. You're an electri electrician from Shomolu, yes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. He doesn't have a company. I'm planning to have a company. Okay, oh, okay. But how is this tax? How is it going to favor me right now? If I should end up paying tax, how is it going to favor me? So he's an electri electrician. How does this act, this affect new act, okay. affect him? Okay. Um, immediately you set up your business. You expect to register uh, to be uh, part of of the economic system. We, we need to be able to know what the volume of transaction you are doing. Uh, we will allow your business to grow uh, up to the point whereby you start generating revenue above 25 million before you come into the tax net. Hmm. That is, you have that room to grow. Uh, there, are, there are telephone businesses, people sell Richard Card, people do Okada, and you know, some of them ranges between some two million and Some of them might never get million. to that 25 million in a bracket. And, and that <laughs> is fine. And this is going to make the economy to be more, you know, robust, more robust. activity, okay, employment so for people. Let me go on a quick break. When we come back, we'll continue this conversation with Obi Ajili. Stay with okay. us. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Your View. Thanks for staying with us. Yes, Obi Ajili. Yeah, so I want some good news for the... A uh, young man out there who is doing a small business or that elderly woman out there. So with this new tax um, law, the finance uh, law now, are we saying that those, um, because the businesses that are supposed to be taxed are supposed from 25 million, 
above, million, above yeah. 25 million. So those small businesses, are you telling us now that those council people that raid them all the time to collect one or two uh, you know, levies from them will be stopped? Is there a mechanism to stop that? That's one. Secondly, we still do not trust the system in as much as um, transparency is concerned. So how are we sure that this um, tax that we're going to be getting from the businesses, the personal income tax, the VAT now, will be used for Economy. what they have said they will use it for? For instance, the minimum wage is hinged on this. So what's the guarantee that we can pay this money and be rest assured that the basic amenities will be taken care of? Uh, thank you very much for that question. Uh, one thing is very clear, um, things are changing and um, government is also uh, recognizing the fact that everybody demands for value for everything they pay now. Okay. Uh, Nigerians have become more aware, uh, they understand what is required anytime they have to pay for anything. Uh, to the common man on the street uh, who is just starting off his business, this is a huge consideration saying that until your business gets to a 25 million revenue and above, it means you have the ability to grow your business. Okay. At least your first few years of attaining that height of 25 million, million revenue, you will have opportunity and you have less, you know, before now filing tax returns for every company at whatever revenue level, it's, 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 it's very cumbersome and very complex for a lot of companies to manage. But this finance bill has come to resolve that. And that uh, helps the ease of doing As we wrap business. up now, we have to wrap up, unfortunately. Okay. But what's the, what's the kickoff date? The kickoff date is February 1st for the VAT. Yeah. And uh, most of the things that uh, has to do with the teen registration and all those things is as good as immediately. So. Yes, so I just wanted to say that you seem you're quite positive about because the bill is one thing, but the operation of it is another. But are you positive that this is will work, especially with things provisions like the tin that you have mentioned? Okay, uh, thank you very Do much. We trust. <laughs> we trust <laughs> the solution. Yeah, yeah uh, to a reasonable extent, this is the first time we are doing something like this okay. as a country. Uh, most times when budget has been released, is meant to be back with a finance bill. Yeah. And we have got the assurance from Mr. President yes. saying that going forward, every budget in Nigeria will be back by a finance bill. We have to Meaning run. we need to be mm. making amendments from yeah. time to, to time. time. All right, unfortunately, that's all that we can take. Thank change. you so much for joining us. Thank that's you. all we can take. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Thank you very much.